Uh, this next talk is a continuation of the first one uh, about particle swarm optimization uh, using the HP prime. And uh, I dedicate this talk, some of you know that I, I grew up in Iraq. Uh, in 1932, the Jesuits from Boston College set up uh, a high school in Iraq, and then later on in the late uh, mid 50s, they opened a uh, university. So they spent about three decades teaching uh, uh, students uh, in Baghdad College High School and, and Hikma University. Hikma means wisdom in Arabic. And, uh, you know, I dedicate this tutorial with an immense gratitude for the effort that these uh, the Jesuits did. And they instilled in us the power to be self-taught. And I felt that no words can fully thank them for that gift alone. And so uh, that's always in my mind that I'm able to self-learn and they instilled that in us. No, it did work. Uh, this is a picture. Uh, this is uh, the high school uh, that they built in the mid-50s uh, at the time of uh, King Faisal II. And this was the, uh, where the uh, uh, Father Superior's office, uh, administrative office were here. And the rest were classes. And they also built two more buildings of equal or even bigger size. To the left, some more buildings here, simple buildings behind. Oh. And they had the church and the quarters of their living. This is a picture of some of the priests that were taken mid to the late 50s. Some of them uh, did teach me. And this gentleman here was Father Powers. He was the Father Superior. He was the last Jesuits to leave Iraq. And he came to our house one night and, and I could feel how difficult it was after all, all these decades that he had to, he, he had the unenviable task of handing over the school to the Iraqi administration. Okay, particle swarm uh, optimization. It's an efficient method for a stochastic uh, optimization. It's, uh, it's based on the movement and cleverness of swarms in the search space trying to locate the best solution, be it minimum or, or maximum. It was developed by James Kennedy in 1995 and uh, the algorithm simulates uh, the use of particles or agents uh, making up swarms moving uh, through the search space. Now, each, every particle represents a point flying in a multi-dimensional space. And then each particle adjusts its flying matrix influenced by its own velocity, its own personal best, and the global best. So there's three influence, three components that determines uh, uh, where, uh, how fast or how fast it uh, changes its coordinates. Uh, here's a here's a, a very good uh, a graphic. Um, there's a particle I uh, at uh, x of k. It has arrived there by, uh, thanks to this velocity, but from going from x of k to x to k of one, it's going to be also influenced by the uh, uh, particle best which is this component, and the global best. So the net, net vector component is the red one here, V of K plus one. That will take it from this point to this point. And this is defines the uh, variables in the previous graphics. Um, like most evolutionary algorithms, the math is simple and very clever, very impressive. Uh, not a whole lot of matrix calculations as you see in classical optimization. Uh, v of k is, is calculated using this equation. Uh, it uses the old velocity here and uh, multiply it by a factor w. w starts up at uh, 1 and then you decrease it gradually. That's, you know, until you hit, they recommend you hit 0.3 and then you stop. You, you don't go less than that. And then there are two components. The component for the particle best there's C1, uh, and then multiply by a random, uh, a uniformly distributed random number between 0 and 1. And then there's another component where it involves the global best, the difference between the current uh, point. 
multiply by R2, another uniformly distributed random number, uh, multiplied by C2. C1 and C2 are constants, but their choice influence the performance of it in a paramount way. When I first implemented this the, on the Excel and then on the Prime, I had some numbers and I was running good. And then I caught a sight of slightly different values in another reference, and out of curiosity, I implemented those new values. They didn't seem to be that much of a difference. They made the algorithm fly you know, and, and perform much better, and I was very surprised. So C1, C2, is very, uh, their values are very critical, and the choice is very critical. Uh, particle swarm and, uh, optimization is easy to code, requires fewer input parameters and subroutines than uh, uh, genetic algorithms. Uh, it requires smaller population sizes than GA, and fewer iterations than GA, and does not require a restart unless you're really dealing with a very, very, very difficult uh, problem. And often returns accurate answers. GA kind of usually takes you in the neighborhood of the optimum, and maybe a hill climbing step is needed to polish the answer, not so with the particle swarm optimization. Um, the implementing it on the HP is easy. Uh, I have a you in the proceedings function PSO mm -hmm. and it optimizes uh, oops, sorry, the function uh, uh, myFX, uh, which was the uh, Rosenbrock. The parameters for PSO are uh, even less than half of the GA parameters. You have the number of variables, you have the population size, how many probes do you want to use to, uh, to find the optimum? And then you have the maximum number of generations, how many iterations you're willing to, to spend time looking for your optimum. And then you have two arrays that define the lower and upper bounds for each variable. And that's basically it. And here's an example for the prime. Uh, I'm trying to use uh, solve the Rosenbrock uh, function. I call PSO and I have, I, the parameters are, I have four variables population size of 40, or even I can use 30, maximum generations of 2,000, you can even play with the slightly less. And then I have two vectors that define the minimum and maximum range. The solutions are always at one. And then I store the result in matrix M3, and uh, um, here's a screenshot for uh, the execution, and, and here are the results, and then I uh, look at the matrix viewers, and as you can see, if you remember, there are more nines after the decimal here than GA. So, not only is particle swarm uh, optimization lighter, mm -hmm. it's actually uh, very good. Uh, it does perform better. Um, and there's even more good news. There's guaranteed conversion PSO. Mm -hmm. So the researchers played and tinkered with this, and they found a method that, uh, that enhances the basic PSO algorithm. It performs exactly like the PSO, except when it comes time to update the uh, velocity of the, uh, sorry, the velocity of the best point, we use a special formula here. Uh, w is, uh, rand here is a, a uniform random number between zero and one. This is the star of the equation. Um, it's an acceleration uh, uh, factor that's dynamically changed. Uh, and we use counters to uh, monitor how many, uh, the, the number of successes and failures in, in, in the process. If we have five sequential successes, we double this value. Conversely, if uh, 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 we fail five times in a row, we cut it in half. And this enhances uh, uh, the ability, you know, the ability to even uh, and guarantees conversion. Um, in in the proceedings, you'll find function GCPSO has exactly the same uh, parameters as the PSO uh, function. And if I want to solve the same problem, I give it the same uh, uh, the same pr uh, uh, arguments: uh, four variables of uh, population size of forty. 2,000 
iterations and the same range and I store the value in the, the result in M3 and this is what it looks like and again we see you know a good number of, of nines um, after the decimal that's very close to, to one. Uh, I'm going to throw in some bonus material and it's worth it. Uh, a similar, there's a method called dif differential evolution and it's very simple and very efficient to implement. It's, uh, it was developed by S Storm and Price again in the mid 90s. Um, um, this algorithm is kind of strange. It has at least <coughs> 10 flavors, but I will present the simplest one. This is called DE Rand 1. It's, it has a weird uh, numbering uh, naming system. Uh, and what it does, it goes through, you give it a, a population size, it goes through e each one, and it attempts to calculate a, a trial value for that to replace that uh, the ith element, and it uses uh, data from rows A, B, and C chosen in that same population at random, and such that they are A, B, and C are distinct integer indices, and it uses that f is a factor that we use, and uh, if a uh, uh, this x uh, proves to be a winner, then we, we re, you know, it becomes the permanent value at row i. Uh, again, there's a fun, uh, the function for the HP prime is function ea, and it uh, optimizes uh, uh, my function, which is the Rosenbrock. Um, the parameters for ea are identical to the parameters of PSO. Very, again, this is very light, just we have four parameters. And uh, if I want to solve the Rosenbrock uh, with the four variables, I give the same exact arguments, and I store the result in matrix M3. And here's the execution. Here are the results. You see a lot of nines. And when I go to the matrix viewer, wow, it's, uh, <laughs> this, this babe delivers. This crowd loves a winner. I'm paraphrasing Steve Buscemi <laughs> from Escape, uh, uh, Escape from LA. Uh, final remarks, uh, evolutionary algorithms uh, are a mix between science, experiment, and art. It's really, we're looking at nature, be it genetics, be it uh, ant colonies, and really getting inspired into some clever uh, 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 algorithms. Uh, there's a large number of variants that I stated earlier this morning uh, because each algorithm has different phases and the scientists have decided, well, you know, maybe if I tweak this phase this way, I get a better result. And, as a, and if you go through the literature, there's an explosion of, of different researchers and trying to improve the algorithms in, in their own way. Uh, it's like being a, a kid in a candy store. Now, one of the things I learned from uh, looking at all these algorithms, that complexity does not always guarantee superiority. That I was surprised, for example, the, the differential uh, 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 algorithm and the uh, particle swarm were simpler than the GA, and yet they performed better. So, um, if the basic idea kind of hits uh, 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 you know, zooms in home, uh, it, it does better. Uh, complexity is not always a guarantee for superiority. Um, I also stumbled on something called no free lunch in search optimization, <laughs> which says there is no single algorithm that will solve all the problems, uh, uh, period. Um, and this concept was uh, proposed by Wolpert and McCready in 97. And uh, it, it basically says if you are solving something, especially a difficult problem, you will need to try different algorithms, okay? Um, and what they're saying is if you have algorithm A, it solves P percent of, of the problems, then there exists one or more algorithm, uh, co collectively column B, that will solve 100 minus P percent of the problem. So no algorithm has monopoly over all optimization problems. And here are some URLs for the website if you want to uh, uh, look at uh, uh, look at some more information on the on the NFL. 
and uh, somebody had asked me about references. Here are reference of uh, uh, books. I have accumulated a lot of books, but those are the, one, the ones that I have, uh, really impressed me with their clarity. Either they have code or they have very good uh, uh, pseudocode. One of the problems when you look at uh, these algorithms, uh, especially look at published papers, everybody puts a little pseudocode. The trick is these pseudocodes, to be honest, are almost uh, 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 useless because the secret of the success is in the details that do they don't show you in this brief pseudocode. And I learned that the hard way. Uh, anyway. Thank you.